Hi, my name is Dr. Rich Malo and I'm the fish vet. Today we've been called to have a look at the red tail catfish here. Um, he hasn't been eating for two weeks and um, since Saturday, so it's two days now, um, he's been floating to the top. Uh, it's got this bed curvature to the body and the reason why he's doing that is that his stomach or his gut somewhere in there looks like it's um it's got air that's causing him to be positively buoyant. Um, so how we're going to approach this uh, um, condition? Uh, we're going to sedate him, get rid, tap off the excess air, um, and because we're thinking that it's possibly a gut type um, gas um, production, we're going to give him some antibiotics that's going to kill uh, anaerobic bacteria, so something like metronidazole. Uh, we'll also give it a broad spectrum antibiotic um, just to cover. Um, any other sort of um, bacterial dysbiosis in the stomach, in the gut, um, as well because there's probably considerable inflammation um, happening, we're going to give him some anti-inflammatories as well. Uh, and together with that, we're going to give him some diazepam, because I'm sure that this fish has gone stressed for some reason, that's why it's gone off his feed. And the additional thing with diazepam, not, it's not just um, trying to help it, uh, so reduce stress and come around, but also that should help stimulate his appetite. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is we're going to give him some anabolic steroids um, to sort of build up his energy reserves uh, and also his appetite because we're also going to give him some uh, gastric tube with some food, stimulate the gut to move, um, as well as with the anabolic steroid together, um, be able to put the body um, away from a catabolic state uh, towards an anabolic state so that they will be uh, putting energy and appetite back into him. Uh, so to do that, we're going to take him around the back uh, to sedate him. So here we've got our sort of our cocktail of drugs because uh, this guy really needs it. We normally don't do such big cocktails um, unless we they're in real trouble. So what we're going to do initially, we're just going to anesthetize him with um, MS222 at 75 milligrams per liter of water and we're going to buffer the acid um, drop uh, with sodium bicarbonate um, otherwise known as baking soda uh, with with anesthetized, anesthetized we're going to tap away the excess gas uh, and then after that we're just going to give him some different medicines uh, we're going to put metronidazole uh, in the food or orally um, and together with some of the uh, fish food we're going to use baby fish food it's got like 55% protein and about 10% fat. That'll give him all the energy he needs. Um, and then we're doing the diazepam. And the dose rate for that is about 0.15 milligrams per kilogram body weight. Um, the anabolic steroid um, that will be given at 6 milligrams per kilogram body weight. And rofloxacin at 5 milligrams per kilogram body weight. Uh, B complex at 1.1 mil per kilogram and then for mixing for the inflammation um, which is going to be given at 0.25 milligrams per kilogram body weight and where I get all these dose rates basically I've been collecting them uh, over 10 to 15 years into a book I've uh, called Fish Bedding Medicines um, so we're gonna weigh him and then we'll draw out all the necessary medicines that we need basically just add your this um, the two and mix it around. Um, basically, we keep the two uh, powders separate uh, because this is the chemical reaction that will happen. And it creates an oily slick. Um, I'm not sure what it does to the chemical. It still works, but I prefer to just add our um, add these two powders separately. Now comes the hardest part is to actually catch the fish. So to weigh him, basically put him in this twice up. So that's eleven kilos. So we've got all our drugs here. Um, 
this is the um, diazepam. So we'll give that intramuscular. Uh, flunixin and an anti inflammatory. Uh, we can also give that intramuscular, so we're just picking a different spot each time you're giving the injection. <clears throat> this is um, anrofloxacin, the antibiotic. Um, you can get local. Uh, tissue reaction, so we're going to give this one intraperitoneal. So to do that, making sure that you avoid all the other organs. Um, basically just pick up the uh, pelvic fin, um, so you can lift up the body wall, go in through, through there. B vitamin, uh, B complex. Uh, we also got quite a big volume, so we're going to give it intraperitoneal as well. This is to help with fermentation uh, and also with um, energy production. Anabolic steroid uh, stanozolol. Again, it's quite a big volume. Um, can you either, either give that intramuscular or intraperitoneal? Um, because it is quite a large volume, we'll give it intraperitoneal. Intracelomic in, in case more correctly in fish. I feel there's something quite hard here, I wonder if it's maybe even got a tumour or something like that. But you can only, I guess, tell if you're doing exploratory laparotomy um, or um, x-rays. Alright, so now we'll <coughs> get him set up ready for uh, gastric tubing. So here we've prepared some baby fish food, which is powdered for, mix it with water, fill it into the syringe, and here we've removed the sort of air from the tube so that we don't actually have too much, so we're not putting air into the stomach. So now we're just measuring the length of the gastric tube that needs to go in, which is just past the length of the operculum. So leaving my finger and thumb on the gastric tube, you can actually mark it with a pen as well, but um, here uh, we get an idea of how far we need to push it in. So we're just here inserting the gastric tube uh, midline straight into its gullet, um, taking care that it doesn't pierce or rupture any structures, no not rupturing through esophagus or the stomach. So we've got somebody else here helping to stabilize the syringe so it doesn't come off. You can actually glue the gastric tube to the syringe as well. So here I've pushed it, if you pull it back slightly I'm just getting the student to check. Uh, you can feel that there's a grip by the um, um, esophagus or their um, esophageal teeth. So now we're gonna push in, uh, the slowly push in the feed um, into his stomach um, and making sure that none of it comes out the gill so you definitely know that it's in going inside the stomach um, with catfish it's not that 
uh, we're just introducing 50 mils of uh, food in there uh, but with a catfish you've got a really distendable stomach it doesn't really uh, worry it too much if you put more than that so we, s we slowly pull the tube out making sure that he's keeping all the food inside so now we're sort of um, we've got a fish in deeper water um, and we're letting him float like he would so this is the part where we're removing the air so we're using a 22 gauge spinal needle uh, it gives us uh, enough of a diameter in the needle to allow ease of um, aspiration by floating him in deep water the air is just naturally going to come to the surface so where we're inserting the needle is going to be the part that is I guess the uppermost and once we've got it in place we're putting negative pressure on the syringe so that we actually know we're in the right location uh, this is a 60 mil needle um, so we've sort of reached the capacity of it so now what I'm do doing is I'm holding the fish up high enough with the hub of the needle above the water and getting my colleague to remove um, the syringe from the hub of the needle uh, get rid of the air from the syringe and re reinstalling the syringe back to the needle and we continue to do this until we feel that there is sufficient amount of air has been removed from the fish so here we've taken the syringe off got rid of the excess air replaced the syringe onto the hub of the needle and withdrawing the air again so we sort of lost our um, position a little bit so we'll pull the needle out a little bit and then redirect the needle uh, making sure that you don't actually move the needle side to side too much because you will actually start uh, causing lacerations inside so here we've uh, removed the spinal needle I put some digital pressure on the point of insertion to make sure that um, the skin and muscle all that forms a seal again uh, so that we don't get any water um, entering the cavity or the, the point of entry of the needle so now the fish is replaced back in the water you can see that he's breathing normally once he's spontaneously respiring um, he's okay to be left okay so here are our reptile cat with um, how many meals did we remove? So uh, many. 7, 11, 10, 60, 660 Yes, so we removed more than half a liter of air from his um, swim bladder. Um, that was what was causing him to keep on tilting to the side. At first I thought it was muscle spasm, but it was actually the air. Um, so now that we've got all the air out, um, being a bottom dweller, he's going to be much more comfortable lying on the bottom. Um, and from here onwards, uh, we've also added vitamin C into the water at 10 milligrams per liter to help with healing. Uh, and we're going to get the owner to tube feed him every two to three days. Um, again, with the uh, baby fish food. Um, so what we're doing, just stay there for a sec. Um, <clears throat> we're feeding him about 20 grams of um, fish food, baby fish food mixed with water so it goes through the syringe. Um, and in that we're going to add two tablets of metronidazole so that's 400 milligrams um, in dissolved in with the food um, we're going to do that two more times and then we'll reassess to see how he is but um, hopefully he should be on the road to repair and then once we've got energy into him so, if, um, so that completes our, our wrap up uh, thank you for watching make sure you subscribe for any new videos that we release and have a fantastic week.